Hello saints, hello friends, hello everybody out there. You know, growing up as a boy, I probably said the Lord's Prayer, oh, I don't know, at least a, at least a thousand times. And, you know, it's not because I knew what it meant, but it's because everybody else did it, so I thought that I was supposed to do it too, you know? So, you know, and never did I really consider the actual words of this prayer until much later on in life and more so after God lovingly giving me gave me the understanding of dispensations and right division of his word so first the Holy Spirit must open our eyes to see to be able to understand you know allowing our brains to understand before we can fully comprehend God's word because we know that the Holy Spirit is, is sent to us as a comforter, as a teacher, uh, you know, someone that watches us, everything we do is there for us, even intercedes for us in prayer. So, you know, in fact, Paul mentions the gift of right division and dispensation is specifically the gift of understanding the mystery is being given to good stewards. Look here at 1 Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful okay so we need to get our topic here okay and the question is what's the Lord's Prayer who is it for why did D Jesus teach it to them what's it about and what does it mean now today hopefully I'm gonna answer some of those questions for you and we'll learn together over about this okay now first things first we see the Lord's Prayer mentioned twice we see it first mentioned in Matthew 6 and again we see it in Luke 11 now there's a few differences uh, you know between the both of them so let's go over it in Luke 11 1 to 3 and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased one of his disciples said unto him Lord teach us how, teach us to pray and John also taught as John also taught his disciples and he said unto them when ye pray say our Father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done as in heaven so in earth give us this day no I'm sorry give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our, our sins for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil in Matthew 6 verses 5 through 13 Jesus says and when thou prayest thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are for they love to pray standing in the synagogues in other words these are the type of people that only pray when they go to uh, what they call church okay when they go to church that's when they pray and generally they don't pray any of the other six days a week they're only seen at the synagogues the churches praying in front of other people and so let's read that again and when thou prayest thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men see this is all about pride the reason why they're praying here is about themselves it's I I I I me myself and it has nothing to do with God it's all about pride and letting other people see them see them praying okay verily I say unto you they have their reward but thou when thou prayest enter into thy closet that is meaning go somewhere by yourself only you and God and talk to him and when when thou hast shut thy door pray to thy father which is in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly but when you pray use not vain repetitions now vain repetitions there's a lot of religions out there especially the largest religion on this planet uh, has many prayers that they continuously say over and over and over and over and over again 
And, uh, you know, I don't understand how they cannot... Well, I do understand why they don't... Why they continue doing it. It's because they don't read the Bible. And they, they've never seen this before in the Bible. So they're doing what they've been taught, okay? But, again, when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, saying the same prayer over and over and over again, expecting... You know, the more times you say it, the better it is, the more powerful it is, the more potent it is. Well, that's not true. Actually, God hates it, and he, and he's actually he's not even listening to you, okay? As the heathens do. For they think that they shall be heard for their many, their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, something important about this prayer. You have to understand that this is Jesus, okay, God in the flesh, telling them how to pray and how not to pray. So I would think if, if, if it's coming out of God's mouth directly, I'd be paying attention, folks. And if he's telling you not to use vain repetitions, okay, like saying the Hail Mary 13 times in a row and saying the Our Father, you know, 10 times in a row and thinking that you're many, many repetitions are somehow you know better than the, the the person that just talks to God as in a communication from friend to friend you're wrong God hates it he's telling you right here in his word not to do it okay so pay attention now first of all take special note like I said what Jesus says not to do okay we just went over that so what we need to do is uh, you know Jesus says not to do these things then and we need to go back and see exactly what each part of this prayer is saying, what it means, and to who, who, you know, who Jesus is talking to and why he told them to pray this. Now, um, if you need, if you have questions concerning this, you know, or find a Christian uh, or, you know, find a better place. If you're going to a church that's telling you to uh, repeat prayers over and over again, you find another place. Or contact me I'll help you I'll, I'll help you find a better place but keep in mind you have to be saved first okay and that's more important than any building or any congregation out there now at this point we need to apply the rule of right division and we need to ask ourselves what dispensation are we dealing with who's being spoken to what's being said why why is it being said where is it being said what time period does this take place in and so on okay so just knowing what dispensation this prayer takes place in actually answers all these questions at once and straight out tells you that it's not for us today. Our Lord Jesus was speaking to the Jews, the nation of Israel, and he's there telling them all about the earthly kingdom, the ushering in of the kingdom of heaven. Now understanding that the kingdom of heaven isn't in heaven, but it's a term used for the earthly kingdom the kingdom that Jesus brings with him and places on the earth okay so not understanding the simple truth is the cause of much confusion throughout Christendom today so okay so when Jesus was on earth he was here to establish the 1000 year earthly kingdom he was here to be their Messiah their ruling king from Jerusalem he was about to usher in the kingdom of heaven you know that all the prophets were that spoke about in the old scriptures the prophetic scriptures but because they were law minded they missed all the signs that Jesus was their king and their Messiah and that they ended up crucifying him instead this put the kingdom of heaven on hold and it's still on hold today until the church is removed okay that's us and God resumes his plan to usher in the 1000 year kingdom of heaven the second coming of Lord Jesus now, by understanding the key of dispensations, you'll quickly see that this prayer was written to the Jews, for the Jews, and all about the Jews, bringing in the earthly kingdom, you know, the kingdom of heaven on earth. Now, let me simplify this. This prayer concerns the activity 
that will take place when Jesus is upon the earth, reigning and ruling over the earth from Jerusalem for a thousand years. Okay, let me show you why this is so. Let's dissect each phrase of the Lord's Prayer to see what's actually being said here. And then maybe, you know, you're going to see what I mean when I say that this prayer isn't exactly for us today. But it's actually all about the nation of Israel 2,000 years ago. And it's going to be for them again in the near future during Daniel's 70th week and also into the thousand year millennial reign of Christ Jesus. Now, the first part, Jesus says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father. Okay, stop there. Our Father. Who is the our here? Okay. Why are they calling God Father? <clears throat> and what's the significance of God being in heaven? Now, I remind you, contrary to popular belief, the body of Christ, the saints, that's us folks, are nowhere to be found in the four Gospels. Okay. This is prior to the mystery of the body of Christ revealed to Paul. The Gentile church doesn't exist at this point. Okay, now don't believe me. Let, let Jesus tell you. Look at Matthew 15, 24. Jesus is speaking. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, so the Our Father, a.k.a. the, the, the Lord's Prayer, is Israel's model prayer. The ye of Matthew 6, 9, where Jesus says, Pray ye. He says, After this manner pray ye. And ye here is the believing remnant of the nation of Israel, the believing Jews, okay? He's not speaking to the body of Christ here. The body of Christ, ha again, hadn't been created until much later with Apostle Paul. So, and now the word Father here denotes origin, okay? When Israel called God Father, they were acknowledging that He gave birth to them, okay? We see this in Deuteronomy 32.6, in 1 Chronicles 29.10, in Psalms 89.26. God brought forth the nation of Israel when he delivered them from the Egyptian slavery. Look at Exodus 4, 22-23. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. Now we see here in John 8, that, the is, that Israel was to renounce Satan as their spiritual father, okay, to discard their idols and so on. In John 8, 42 to 44, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you, you ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now God told the nation of Israel to declare, O Lord, thou art the father. We see this in, Israel, in Isaiah 64, 8. But now, O Lord... Thou art our Father. We are the clay, and thou art thou are potter, and we all are the work of thy hand. And in the future, the believing remnant of the Jews will proclaim God as being their Father. Isaiah 63, 16. Doubtless thou art, art our Father through Abraham. Be ignorant of us. And Israel, acknowledge us not. Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer, thy name is from everlasting. In Jeremiah 3, it speaks of Israel, uh, Israel's future as well. Jeremiah 3, 19. But I, the Lord, said, How shall I put thee among the children, and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the hosts of the nations? And I said, Thou shalt call me my Father, and shalt not turn away from me. In Malachi 2.10, Have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? Okay, now we move on to which art in heaven. Now, God was to dwell with Israel on earth. Now, remember a while ago, I told you that Jesus was to bring the kingdom of heaven to the earth 
This is what's meant by God dwelling with them on the earth, okay? Yet, God was still in heaven. Israel here is acknowledging her fall into sin and her delaying God's earthly kingdom. However, in the future, at the 70th week of Daniel, Israel will begin to believe that Jesus is their Messiah and they'll call for him. Then the kingdom of Israel will be brought to the earth. I'm sorry. The kingdom of heaven will be brought to the earth. We read in, in Hosea 5.15, I will go and return to my place in heaven, okay? Till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face in their affliction, they will seek me early. Now, during the seven-year tribulation, they'll begin to seek him, okay? Out of their testing and trials, they'll acknowledge their Messiah. And when the Jews killed Jesus, remember, the, the veil, the, the covering, the, the entrance to the temple that was torn in two from top to bottom. This is when God's presence left the temple. And Jesus says here in Matthew 27, 51, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. We see the veil being torn also in Mark 15, 38, and again in Luke 23, 45. Now, look what's in Matthew 23, 38. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Now, Israel will, won't admit Jesus as being their Messiah until he returns. At uh, Psalm 118.26 speaks of this. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. Now, by praying the Our Father, Israel is asking God to come back to them, to return to the earth, and be their Emmanuel, which means God with us. Okay. Now, moving on. Hallowed be thy name. Here the Jews are recognizing the God as being separate from all the other gods, all the other idols they were worshiping, the lesser gods, okay? Here they revere him as being the one and only true living God, the God of all gods. They're their one true God, okay? Creator of all things in heaven and earth. Thy kingdom come. Here they acknowledge that they really messed up at the crucifixion and their nations fell. It was postponed, the earthly kingdom, with uh, Jesus as their Messiah. But now they're saying, Thy kingdom come, meaning they're ready for Him to bring the kingdom of heaven on earth. Okay. Now remember, Jesus and the disciples preached, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They could have had it right then and there, but they rejected Jesus as their Messiah. Now, in the future, during Daniel's 70th week, the remnant of the believing Jews will be praying for God's kingdom to come and her Messiah Jesus will return at the second coming and we see this in Revelation 5 Revelation 11 and 20 now moving on thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven now Satan has polluted the heaven and earth with sin okay and by the time Israel's believing remnant is in the seven-year tribulation Daniel 70th week we the body of Christ will be already in heaven per uh, via the rapture okay we'll be ruling and reigning in God's glory in heaven and halfway through those seven years Satan and his angels will be cast out of heaven that is the second heaven and they'll be thrown uh, thrown down upon the earth and we the church will occupy the heavenly government that they just lost okay that they were thrown out we're gonna we're gonna occupy all the principalities the powers and the positions that they lost okay first God will restore heaven he's gonna glorify his son Jesus in heaven along with all his plans for heaven and the church now knowing this the Jewish remnant will be praying that God will do the same thing on earth with their kingdom as he just did with the heavenly kingdom okay they want Jesus to return to cleanse the planet to get rid of all Satan's people and the Antichrist and to restore all things new just like God did in heaven give us this day our daily bread now <clears throat> God rained down manna for the Israelites to eat as Moses led them from Egypt to the promised land you know, most people know about this story and the manna and they've heard about this you know in the past maybe in their church or whatever but the manna is a common uh, subject when it comes to Exodus and Moses and the Israelites but there's another aspect to this 
the prophetic meaning of the manna, okay, God will once again feed them during the 70th week of Daniel, the seven year tribulation period. We can see a dual meaning. One is history and the other is prophecy here, okay? In Micah 7, 14 to 15, Feed thy people with thy rod, the flock of thine heritage, which dwell solitarily in the wood, in the midst of the carmel. Let them feed in Bashan and Galead, as in the days of old. According to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, will I show unto him marvelous things. Also, in, in the book of Psalm, we see the stubbornness, the ungrateful Israelites under Moses' leadership. Psalm 78, 19-20. Yea, they spake against God. They said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock, the waters gushed out, and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Okay, they were, they were being selfish. They, were, they, they didn't know what they had. They're a bunch of just, you know, it reminds me of spoiled brats, okay? Now, the psalmist David writes again here in Psalm 23, 5, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And we see in Matthew 24, When the Antichrist desecrates the temple, the abomination of desolation, the remnant believing Jews will flee to the mountains. And Jesus tells them to flee without gathering anything, no clothes, no food, nothing. He says, when you see these things, just go, 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 and don't look back. So God has to provide for them, just like he did in Exodus, okay? They're not going to have anything. They're, on, they're fleeing from the Antichrist, He's gonna, but God's going to give them food, clothing, water, everything they're going to need until the second coming of their Messiah, Jesus. Now, we see in Revelation that the, the same manna will once again be provided, okay? Revelation 2.17 he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth. So we can see here that the prayer is all about the nation of Israel for the time of tribulation, when they'll need God the most. And Jesus instructs them on what to pray during that time. This has nothing to do with us today, folks, the body of Christ, okay? Now, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Here we see works, a works-based salvation involved, okay? Their forgiveness will depend upon works, enduring until the end, and forgiving others along the way in order to receive forgiveness from the Lord. Again, this is all about the kingdom program where works are once again in place. There are no works, uh, there's no works today needed in our program, okay? Our salvation comes by faith alone, without works. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Here we see the temptation that they're going to have to endure during the seven year tribulation, the falling away, the grand delusion, the lies, the rest of the world that they're going to believe. But here they pray to be excused from that delusion, not to be tempted of all the things that will take place during the 70th week of Daniel. Now keep in mind, God doesn't force anyone to sin. In James 1, 13 to 14, Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Now, these believing Jews are praying for protection and praying that they'll not be overpowered by temptation to accept the Antichrist. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Now notice that this passage here is absent in most of the corrupted newer versions. Okay, But this is speaking of God in his great power, delivering Israel's, uh, the remnant of Israel from the tribulations, horrors, and deception. He, he'll resurrect them and bring them into his earthly kingdom, the, heaven, the uh, kingdom of heaven on earth at the second coming when our Lord Jesus comes down from heaven. In the last word is amen this is the hebrew word for so be it okay now in closing i've just shown you that the lord's prayer isn't for us today but it is for the nation of israel as she goes through the final week of daniel also known as the seven year tribulation now friends in the body of christ the church today when we pray all you have to do is talk to god okay as you would your own father or best friend be specific okay give thanks 
and, and bring all your concerns before his throne. Pray for others. Pray for the salvation of people that you know that are, that are not saved. Pray for increased wisdom and knowledge of the gospel for today. Pray to the Father through his Holy Spirit in the name above all names, Jesus Christ, his Son, and our Lord and Savior. So with that, peace and grace in Christ Jesus be with all of you and your families. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for studying with me, saints, and I'll see you on the next video.